Silicon Valley is a region in San Francisco, California and is home to the biggest companies in the world that create most of the products and services we use today. iPhone, Meta, Microsoft, Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley. It's the world center for innovation and also home to Apple's $5 billion pack. Apple Park has been built to reflect Apple's value. While on my trip to Botswana, I found a similar tech valley that was being built for Africans. This is Botswana's $60 million innovation hub and it has one of the most fascinating building designs I have ever seen anywhere in the world. When I first saw it, I was wondering if it was a spaceship that landed in the middle of the desert because of how it looked and that got me really intrigued that I decided to find out what really goes on inside this building. This is the Science and Technology Park. Made in Botswana. It's rugged, it's waterproof, nothing sure? actually happens to it. What's Botswana Innovation Hub? Botswana Digital and Innovation Hub is a national uh, innovation agency established by government to facilitate innovation in Botswana. We also work with other groups such as the Academia, the Research Institute, okay. uh, to support our startups uh, for development of uh, innovative uh, solutions or technologies. Why was it important to set this up? This park actually was set up as a platform or catalyst for business growth, uh, for supporting uh, innovation activities, basically to bring together all innovators uh, within the ecosystem so that they can collaborate and work together for development of new products and services. When you say bring together people in the ecosystem, are you just talking about people in Botswana or is it for the whole of Africa? It's actually for the whole of Africa. Obviously, we'll start with Botswana, and once they've come up with the product and services, then they can always collaborate with other uh, innovators within Africa as well as the global uh, community as well. Just coming in here, I uh -huh. noticed the building looks like a spaceship, and I also heard that the building is similar to what they have in Silicon Valley. Was that intentional? Yes, this was actually intentional. If you look at it very closely, it somehow resembles the Okavango Delta, which is one of the prominent sites here in Botswana. So yes, in terms of the design, it was very deliberate to bring together the innovative community, the ecosystem, just like the Silicon Valley, uh, for development of unique uh, products and activities. This building is so remarkable in its design as the roof has large overhangs to passively shade the building and protect it from the heat of the desert. Its color and design were also inspired by the sand dunes of Botswana which makes it blend in perfectly with its environment. This is a 57 hectare plot. In the middle is actually the what we call the icon building. This is the building that was constructed by a BDIH. This is available to all startups as well as well established tech companies. Around the Icon building, we have got about 42 plots um, that are available to investors. Obviously, those that are in the tech and innovation space, so they are welcome to come and set up here. We want really to create a, a community of innovators uh, where there can be collaboration, where all these players can actually come together to basically develop solutions for Botswana as well as for Africa. Botswana has managed to push aside Morocco and South Africa and lead Africa in the investments list. Where is this place that we're going to get at? This is the Science and Technology Park for Botswana. These are like offices in front. Yes, these are offices, uh, but these are really for our startups. We are just waiting for the other section of the building to be completed and then we'll migrate all these offices there. This space then will be available for all our startups. Uh, we'll see how we finish it so that um, it can be very conducive and welcoming to those that will want to come and sit here. Again, we'll provide amenities, broadband, mm -hmm. so that they are able to uh, come up with those products and services. We have got several startups that we are supporting, um, obviously in different sectors. We bring them all here, we provide them with free internet, we provide them with amenities so that they can uh, develop those ideas into something that is tangible, a prototype if you want to say. While I was here, I also met some of the startups to see what they were up to. We are an original equipment manufacturer, meaning that we get components and we assemble them. And we do consumer electronics, meaning that anything that has a motherboard, we actually assemble. We are not only just an aspiring Pan-African country, but we've been leading, especially in state-of-art consumer electronics. So. 
What has it been like building your business in Botswana? You know, we've been trying to do like software solutions that are business to customer and we found that, you know, they don't really pick up because um, there are not a lot of people like you say. So we, we, we just focus mainly on uh, business to business type of solutions so far to survive. Is this mainly like funded by the government or is it a private public partnership? We are mainly funded by the government. It's a national innovation agency. But we also work with the private sector and as well as United Nations through UNDP for capacity building. Um, but mainly we are funded by government as well as assisted by our regional partners. <laughs> One of the things I'm loving about Botswana is the direction it's taken by moving the economy from being solely focused on mining its minerals to building a country that unlocks the potential of its people through technology. We have the advantage of having a very youthful population and we want to turn this into an opportunity for us, not just for market, but for retooling, skilling, digitization. It has been dependent on its diamonds for so long, with over 50% of its GDP coming from its mineral resources. This has led to a problem of overdependency because the minerals can one they run out. How do you feel like innovation and technology will change the face of Botswana? Yes, you see, Botswana has been trying to diversify the economy from being mineral-led to knowledge-based economy. And I believe that innovation and technology can actually help the country to transform the economy into a knowledge-based economy. I mean, in terms of innovative products and services that come from both the private sector as well as our innovators, this is what we want to see driving Botswana's economy going forward. And I think this is the major role that technology and innovation can actually play in that regard. How many people do you have here working? Roughly a hundred. A hundred people? Roughly like a hundred, yeah. What production is going on? Yes. She is holding uh, one of our greatest devices. It's called the TH02. This is what the government has trusted us with the ongoing rollout of, of laptops across all the secondary and primary schools. She's trying to check if the motherboard is functional. So that's what she's doing. We manufacture phones that are Android powered. So which means that this is the station where they do all the checkups and want to see if the softwares are synchronic to the device. So we have two mobile phones, lower end and high end. Lower end is our Diatek Blade and the high end is our Diatek XP. This is our high end cell phone. Oh. That's like 48 megapixels and it's 64 GB. So a quick sample that's already active as this one. So you can just uh, flip through and use it. Wow. Made in Botswana. <laughs> What's the plan to scale going forward? So we're starting right here at home, addressing the problems at home first, and then we're gonna try and scale them out to other African countries that are experiencing the same sort of issues. Mm. So we plan to you know, develop the solution, uh, get it up and running in Botswana, and then we can talk to other countries, show them what we've done here, and hopefully they'll be able to adopt um, the same kind of systems, and we'll build it for them. Right here we have the TH02. This is currently ongoing with Botswana government, mm -hmm. but then we decided we shouldn't only cater for the government. We need to find a way to cater for private schools. So this is what we came up with. It's rugged, it's waterproof. Oh. It's dust proof and this is solely designed for kids because you know how kids can actually drop it. From this height, nothing sure? actually happens to it, you know. Eee. So, yeah. <laughs> you open the back again, let me see. Yeah, oh, nothing wow. happens and nothing happens to the screen as well. So, yeah, that's the beauty of it. That's why it's a ragged laptop. What are this? This is a station where we put our television after assembly. This is where testing goes on. We need to check like its compatibility mm -hmm. in terms of Android. This is the station where we do our checkups. Ah. Production was done on, on the Diatek television. It's a very small TV, but we wish to also expand to even bigger inches and, and have our TV smart and Android powered. So very soon we'll have production for that one. This is our fridge. I don't know what to call it, but this is a spectacular product that we have. It's very beautiful. And some people will say it's a smeg. It's not a smeg, it's a Diatek, you know. It has similar features, yes. Yes, so this is... Is this know, drink for us? Yeah, you can have drinks. Oh. You can have drinks. Oh, wow. <laughs> this retails for 14999 It's a very beautiful fridge. So, would you say it's possible for, like, a Nigerian company to come here and 
establish themselves? Yes, it's possible. Actually, we have had a number of inquiries from startups from um, Nigeria who just wanted to see what we are doing here in Botswana, some of them for collaboration. So they are most welcome, including other innovators from Africa as well, from other parts of Africa. What's this called? Yeah, this one is called an amenity garden. We have actually have two of them. There's this one and there's another one that side. This space is also available for functions and other activities that we want to do within the park. But remember, uh, the objective is networking as well as collaboration. So we don't want them to be confined into their offices. You can just take a walk, come up here, sit wherever to just think and come up with those uh, ideas. What are the kind of investors you're looking at? You know, there's small scale startups, mm -hmm. there's bigger startups. So who are the kind of people that you're looking to attract? Really? we are open to all our investors as long as you are in the technology and innovation space. If your technology or a solution is one that will really disrupt the way in which we work, we are most welcome here. Even multinationals, big companies, they are also uh, welcome to come and invest uh, within the park. How much does it take to get like a piece of land here? Like I said, there are many plots around here. It will depend on the plot size that you want. Most of them are going for market rate, but we also have an industrial site where the rates are actually far, far lower. This will be about $30 or so per square meter, yes. So where do you see technology in Botswana, let's say in the next five years? I see Botswana that is well networked, um, utilizing the available technologies, whether developed here or outside the country. Because remember, we have said this is one vehicle that can actually transform our economy from being mineral to knowledge-based. How long ago was this project started and when do you see it being fully completed? BDH actually started in 2010, but it started uh, being operational in 2012. And then we started building this building in 2014. The intention was to finish uh, within two years, which was 2016. We did have some challenges, uh, structural challenges with the building. It's almost complete. About 75% of the structure is complete. We've got only one section that remains undone. We believe that by the end of this year, we should have the whole building completed. When I came here, I heard there are just 2.5 million people in Botswana. Don't you feel like the market is too small? Yes, indeed, uh, the market is small. But what we always say to our innovators is that start here, build up here, and then you can now reach out to the whole of Africa. I would never say in business it's easy, but you always strive and persevere. And for us being a local manufacturer, we wanted to be a trendsetter. We wanted to be the first in the manufacturing industry, especially when it comes to electronics. By the grace of God, we were able to cab some challenges. We were able to overcome them. So it's, it's never really easy in business, but we've come a long way. How easy is it to get access here to come and start up your company? It's very easy. We can actually facilitate your, your coming in here, including visas, oh, as wow. well as you establishing your own company here. By the way, where we are also located is it's a special economic zone. Mm -hmm. So all companies that are set up here, they've got access to tax incentives as well as labor dispensation. Wow. This is something that we can also facilitate as BDIH on your behalf. So it's relatively easy for you to come and set up here. How much does it cost like, to set up a company in Botswana? It's about $35 to register a company here in Botswana. Um, then obviously then it will depend into the sector in which you will want to operate. Obviously there will be some capital that you need in order to, to start operating. Do you think technology is the key to changing Africa? And how do you think it can change Africa? Indeed, technology can actually bring quite a significant change in Africa. We are used to doing our things our own way. And you have seen that in most cases, it's not an efficient way of doing things. And I want to believe that technology innovation can actually help us as Africa to propel our economies forward so that we are able to compete uh, with the rest of the world. So I believe technology is the way forward for us as Africa. What's your advice to a lot of young people across Africa mm -hmm. who are interested in technology? My advice is that there are many opportunities that are available to our young people. They just need to sit down, reflect on uh, what they want to do, and obviously then approach uh, entities that can actually assist them, not only to set up, but also to mentor them as they develop their product and services. There's a huge market in Africa, and um, there's appetite for innovative um, product and services. They just need to identify a niche market and and then come up with a product or a solution for that particular market and they will be able to be successful.
Bozone Digital and Innovation Hub is here. It's available uh, to all um, innovators. Feel free to, to contact us, to engage us, and we'll facilitate uh, those engagements so that that product or that service that you have um, developed out there can actually come and benefit us here in Botswana as well as Africa as a whole. You'll see the links in the description below, so just check it out if you want to contact them. I believe Africa is the next big growth market in the world, and it's great to see countries like Botswana building themselves a seat at that table. If an increasingly mobile phone-enabled population across Africa can direct more focus on technological production instead of consumption, it will lead to more digital jobs for us and will allow us to compete on a global scale. Africa is a continent of innovation and creativity, and I'm glad I'm playing a part in this by sharing the story. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.